Happy New Year, Shame on the Frontier fans. What was interesting about the SLF Mini is the fact that if they actually did have an episode last week, it still would have been the day before New Year's. So they still would have had to done the SLF Mini right here, right now, as the first Shame on the Frontier of the New Year's. Shame on the Frontier could be rather tactful, even though they ain't got no New Year's gifts. Come think about it, his Atomi is unemployed, isn't he? Ray's doing Ray things, which segues me into my next point, actually. That new opening is dope as hell. That new opening slaps, y'all. And I always liked the first opening, honestly. It's just like, this one, I probably have to play them side by side to be real, to actually get an actual critique. But, first impressions, damn. The ending is simple type of ending, honestly. I feel the same way I did about One Piece ending last night. Not exactly the same, of course, but... I feel like I never thought too much of the first Chamber of Love ending anyway, so... What's interesting about the opening, the new opening now, is I notice a lack of Psycho Zero. Kind of how this entire episode didn't have Ray in it to right at the end and then right at the end of the video of her once again being sad that she doesn't have the courage to actually speak to his Hitsutome. Which I have to say is the, fr the first thing that came to my mind is this is getting old. And what kind of sucks about that is, again, yeah, the opening is kind of all over our main trio that we got right here. And the first time we got an opening, of course, it was primarily Soraku, so there was at least a balance between everybody else in the show. And the reason I'm pointing that out is, because anybody who's been seeing my Shangwell Love Frontier reviews know that I have kind of been anticipating the main four group here. And you can say that, obviously, still, at some point, that's going to happen, because Saka Zero is going to get back into the mix at some point, somehow. It's just that that's not really the narrative we're going for anymore. It's not like when it happens, it happens, but it's just simply not important right now. You've had your hopes up for somehow Saka Zero joining the Winter Mountain fight. But then again, Marvel readers already know the answer, right? Then again, when it comes to the actual episode, I'm not completely sold on Ray not being this new player in this trash game. I'll be the first to admit the more you think about it. It makes a lot of sense for her to be that guy. You just had a random guy all of a sudden coming in here playing this game for the first time, and all of a sudden meeting some rock who, coincidentally, it's kind of like, really? But we're just supposed to accept that that's all there is to it. Especially since Soraku pointed out that during those fights, he indeed was training this newbie more so than training himself for the Wetmont fight. But not to sound overly critical about the whole thing, but it's kind of like the, the main focus of this fight here was figuring out different ways to use the bugs in the game to teach this newbie the bugs, show him the new bugs in there, and the cracks here and there that you can kind of use for hacks. Which again is right off Soraku's alley being a freak, as in a trash gamer. Yes, I get it. But was it the point of Shangri-La Frontier being a god tier game is the fact that it doesn't have these problems? Do you want to just play a game like Shangri-La Frontier in terms of finding VR or headset kind of is okay, but at the same time, if you're going to play that game in a way that you would never play Shangri-La Frontier, how is it really helping? Again, a reminder that my gamer days are kind of far behind me, so if I don't know, I don't know. I might be just talking about my ass here. However, what? I'm just saying I don't get it. Of course, from parts of the fights had its entertaining aspects in it, especially that part where a new bug was figured out, Shirok was kind of like, I think I'm just gonna let this hit me. <laughs> I know it means wasn't bad, it's just in the back of my mind the whole time I'm kind of like, okay, no, but why are we doing this? Does this have anything to do with the plot? We fillering right now? Filler? Fillering. Let's, uh, let's, let me never say that again. <laughs> but yeah, unless that player, that new newbie that was in the game, ends up being the player that we've come to know in some, in some shape or form in Shangri La Frontier itself. Or if somehow there is bugs that ends up going on in Shangri La Frontier. I don't really see the point. Sorry. But now that we mentioned that bugs end up happening in Shangri La Frontier here and there that's trying to crack down on, not only would that not be anything strange for Soraku to be the first person to figure those bugs out. He was kind of the headliner, the front runner when it comes to figuring out new points in the game that nobody else figured out even though he just started. I.e. Emu, or Rabbit Kingdom in the first place, Rabbit Hoosa, that's how you say it. And going up against the Night Slayer, having the Night Slayer's curse. Not saying he's gonna find bugs in the game, but he's definitely a trailblazer for better or worse. And on the fact that at the end of the episode we realize that there's a bunch of updates that just happened. There's room for error. I kinda just played both sides just now, didn't I? Making observations, it's a freaking review. Now moving on to the part where we meet Emo's sister. Well, things I can't wait to pronounce. Like, it, it was a lot of weird consonants together that doesn't really say anything. Tight, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? And Soraka went there to combine his stats. And once he combined his stats by shugging that huge, dare I say poison, potion, right? Typical alcohol potion. People also call it poison. Or the devil's juice. Actually, I only ever heard that referred to brown liquor. Thinking the only people who call it alcohol devil juice is black people. Realizations, y'all. Anyways, 
Of course, the highlight of that scene was indeed Soraku <laughs> picking up on the old girl's speech and then just imitating Emu. Or less sharing those poor people may find the highlight of that scene. Soraku being ripped off <laughs> when it comes to him buying those new parts for his weapons. There is a lot of things Emu could have warned us about before we went into this. <laughs> But the goal was achieved for combining all his stats and he even gained some new stats as well. Since now he has to go back on the grind for money, he's definitely going to be able to raise some stats. Even if this part is presumably going to be off straight. Now, quick thing, right? I have been kind of critical when it came to Shangri-La Frontier about how long it's taken us to get to this Weatherman fight. And I'm actually kind of confused a little bit by the next points we're going to be making because apparently there was a two week time there's two weeks to be fight this guy but at the very end of the episode there was a two week time skip and only two weeks showing us that how long it's taking Ray to actually also write a freaking friendship letter Ray is getting boring it is like you, you gotta do something else opening it already doesn't care about you anymore Ray you gotta make some moves but I say this to say this time skip not only showed Ray but it showed us going towards the updates and they specifically stated that it's the same time as the way to my fight so I'll just consider presumably the time to fight Weatherbond is actually right now, i.e. next episode. However, what has just now been placed in front of us not only has to happen before said Weatherbond fight, dare I say is more interesting? We come to Ashra Kai. Now here's the deal with that. Basically, and a rather long way of saying that, I'll keep it up. Pistol Gun pretty much told Soraku and Okazo that Atrox Kai is against taking out Weatherbot, and she can't convince them otherwise. And since they kind of been a thorn in her side, anyways, which we see before when Pistol Gun first appeared on our screens in the first half, the eventual moment where Atrox Kai and Pistol Gun, or rather the whole team, will have to go up against each other, was indeed coming. But I would say I thought of it more so as an ambush on Atrox Kai's part. Pistol Gun either went too far, these guys either remember Soraku since they tried to go after him two times. And Okaizo in the mix and pretty much it's a war against them even if it, we are outnumbered three against them. Which we shouldn't be because we're Psycho Zero. But the method that we're taking here is simply bringing the fight to them in the first place because they're in the way of us asking of our actual goal of fighting with them let alone defeating it. Something that we have built up for damn near five episodes now. Yeah, and then see the way these events are going to happen coming. Sometimes it's not what happens, it's how it happens, and you definitely do a curveball at me, Shape with our Frontier. You just made it kind of weird, because now we gotta do everything, not necessarily simultaneously, but back to back. <laughs> but at the same time, that might be for the best, and you don't, you don't wanna take, take out Ashura Kai right now, and then give him two weeks to recoup before we gotta fight Weatherman, who they don't want y'all to fight at all. If you can even take out Ashura Kai, bunch of PKers. Even though you guys, if you take them all out, you do get the loot. They, get the, they, they still got the loot now, don't they? Despite what we've seen from some lower, lower, less miserable members of Ashura Kai in the past, I don't have any reason to truly believe that this is going to be an easy fight. All these considering on paper, we shouldn't be able to take these guys out. If we do have Pencil Gone with us, Pencil Gone is just one woman. I mean, Okaizo, his time to shine it is coming, even outside of training, I guess. And Soraku is Soraku. However, Despite what I said about Psycho Zero, since we are indeed going in as the main three trio to fight Weatherbond, there don't really seem like much point in trying to add more people into this. I mean, if we added Psycho Zero, the, attack, the main attacker, even if we added, like, what, Animalia to it as well, these people we met down the line just to help out in this fight against Ashura Kai, they're still not going to come back and help out against freaking <laughs> Weatherbond. Before this video gets too long, that was pretty much the episode, and I am indeed very hyped to see what happens next. A road leads to two weeks. I end the next episode. There's not a break next week, right? I'm really shaking my frontier gotta be bruh, next week better be an episode. We fast forward two weeks. So now you gotta wait two weeks. That's some Zombie 100 shit. I was like, hell, As far as other details, I mean, again, the SR video was kind of funny. Especially the part where nobody got anybody's guess. So, like, you got a job. You are a freaking model. <laughs> now, as a music artist, I can tell that sometimes professions like that doesn't exactly equate to money. Girl. I'm also wearing my gift. And there's something I wanted to point out. You know, at the end of the ending, where we see the main trio going up against a monster, Soraku has new headgear. Even more importantly than that, when I had to rewind that to realize Soraku had new headgear, he no longer had the Night Slayer's curse. I gotta keep it real with y'all. The fight against Ashura Kai, that's a new ish. Looking forward to that. The fight against Weatherman is a big goal. We've been waiting on that all this time. But the eventual rematch against Lakangan. Something that we always known that we had to do in the back of our minds the entire time we was going through this show. That right there. <laughs> All this considered, Chain One Frontier, you took having a moment of taking forever to get to a specific point. 
to lay out all this stuff right here that's be hyped about. Ladies and gentlemen, the second half has indeed begun. Very power move, Shane One Frontier. I ain't mad at you. Go watch this video, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Like this video from here, and I'll see y'all. Peace out, subscribe to the spin move.